everybody. Welcome to the Homeworkies podcast. We are really excited today. We have a fun, special episode for you to get ready. A countdown to Christmas will be here before we know it. So we have to get ready. And today we are talking about Deliver by Christmas, one of the fan favorites of recent years. And so we had to have on our friends, Ryan and Kelly from the Romcom Gents here. And uh, thank you so much, both of you, for coming back on the podcast. Thank you. It's good. It's gonna be back. It's really right? good yes. to be here. Burr, yeah. it's, it's cold. Oh, it's because it's freezing. Mm. <laughs> freezing on this hundred degree day. <laughs> it's been warm here, but I feel chilled. I want a sweater on. Mm. Yes, I mean, there's nothing that will put you in the Christmas spirit more than watching a Hallmark Christmas movie. That's yeah, for sure. That's true. Yep. Yes. <laughs> We just got back from Christmas Con myself, and uh, that was one of the things that we asked all the uh, the stars on the red carpet. How do you get in the Christmas spirit in August? <laughs> mm, a good question. Well, yeah. Vancouver doesn't get too hot, and a lot of them are filmed up there, right? Yeah. So, so maybe they can just pretend a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. Have you, have you been having a, a rough uh, summer in Portland? It's uh, been kind of rough. There's been a, yeah. like three or four hundred degree days. It's not <laughs> it's not like last year, but we're all wimps up here. We're just like, when is it going to be fall? I need my like coffee weather. It was yeah. nice having a popsicle and watching a Christmas rom-com last night. Oh, nice. <laughs> it felt was, really refreshing. Yeah. 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 Well, how have you both been doing? It's been a little while since we last had you on. And uh, yeah, how was your... Uh, your, how's your 2022 going? Well, Kelly's a dad now. Oh, oh yeah. okay. You talk about me and I'll talk about you. Yeah. Kelly's what, a what dad. Going on He's doing me? great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finally getting a little sleep. Not this week, yeah. but recently. So yeah, I have a kid now and um, I don't know. We've just been working on movie stuff. Mm-hmm. You have an older kid now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a toddler. Well, <laughs> Uh, and he's good. He's he's the one that you might hear screeching in the background, right? Yeah, now. he's yeah. screeching, and he's really into trash truck. <laughs> if all you mm-hmm. know, it's trash truck. Um, yeah. yeah, but besides that, we've just been uh, writing. Ryan's been doing some coloring work, um, uh, just like little bits of commercial mm-hmm. film and mm-hmm. stuff. I did a Gatorade commercial nice. that was fun. Oh. Yeah, I did a nice. North Face recently. It's mm-hmm. just we're doing a bunch mm-hmm. of commercial work over here. It's not as exciting as we want it to be, but it will be soon. Mm-hmm. Cool. And how's the podcast been going? Uh, great. I think mm-hmm. it's been fantastic. It's been wonderful. Actually, our yeah. last like string of movies has just been a choice. Mm-hmm. Have you seen Mystic Pizza? I think I saw that you reviewed it recently. Yes, I had it for my blind spot pick in June. Uh, every month I over on my blog, I, I pick a, 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 a film to watch that's mm-hmm. popular or cult classic or, mm-hmm. a, you know, a, a, a critically praised film. And I uh, I review it that I that I haven't seen, mm. and uh, and so I've done close to eighty. This next Whoa. month will be my eightieth blind spot Ooh. pick. Wow, <laughs> so way I've been to doing go it for a while. I had a lot. I have a lot of blind spots as we most of us do. <laughs> um, but I try to give some variety. I don't want it to all be like prestige films and sure. And uh, and so I that was a rom com that I had never seen, and uh, so I I decided to give it a shot and. I did really enjoy it. I I think that the relationship between the girls is a lot better than the relationships with dudes in the movie with their men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I agree with that. Yeah, I enjoy the rom comness of it, but I think the movie really thrives when it comes to the girls' relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's yeah. really underrated. I'm yeah. glad that people are mm-hmm. kind of discovering it. Yeah, and I found out in in researching for my review, I found out that there's a new Mystic Pizza musical that's been written. What? It hasn't gone to Broadway yet. Okay, is it off Broadway or is it like in in production? It, like they're getting it ready? Yeah, it was like in in uh, in one in one of the um, it was like in Toronto or someplace like that. Oh okay, that's yeah. a gag on Thirty Rock. Like they they do this fake musical and it's Mystic Pizza the musical. Oh really? <laughs> oh really? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about Deliver by Christmas. And uh, it's that I think you have to have some context for this movie because it came out in 2020 and it was just a, the perfect movie for that moment because mm. it's all about sort of this this relationship over texting, basically. And mm-hmm. we were still in the pandemic then. And I think that 
it just meant even more. I watch it now and I'm like, it's a pretty basic movie and I enjoy it still now. But I think it was especially beloved because of the sort of the time when it came out. It's as close to like a pandemic romance as I think we would want or get. Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was a, a, not you've got mail. Well, yeah, there was kind of like, if you mix, you've got mail Mm -hmm. and sleepless in Seattle, like just Mm -hmm. the, the distance between the two people and not knowing who you're talking to, but yeah, but you do maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's dive in and talk about Deliver by Christmas. And uh, and so this, like I said, this movie came out in 2020. And uh, the little summary is sparks fly when bakery owner Molly and newcomer Josh, a widower who recently moved to town with his young son, first meet. But Molly's enchanted by mysterious client she's never met in person. And it takes a special wish delivered by Christmas to bring Molly and Josh together again. Well, <laughs> classic Hallmark. I yes. like how it's like, you know how it's going to end. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to tease Hallmark movies a little bit because the plots are always like they feel a little mad libby where it's like she's a baker florist, uh, like creative yeah. thing. Uh, this time she's a baker and he's a widower, divorcee, um, single workaholic. He, he works yeah. on code and algorithms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do like, he has a date later with that uh, woman who he doesn't want to go on a date with. And mm-hmm. she's like, so, uh, you know, tech stuff. And he gets offended. It's like, He's like, how do you not know? Oh my gosh, you my don't know my exact thing. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what I would have called it except tech stuff too. <laughs> Well, not only was this a standout because of the plot uh, with it being kind of a pandemic-ish plot, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but also it was one of the first movies uh, in this sort of new wave of diversity and inclusion in Hallmark. Mm, And the fact that it had a mixed race uh, couple in the lead was was very special. It was one of the first times that we'd seen that. They've done a lot oh, more really? of them now since okay. then. But uh, but that was definitely something about it that stood out. And the supporting cast too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of mm-hmm. a lot of the bit bit characters, they weren't all just it wasn't just whitewashed. It was Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, was there was the guy diverse. at the ice cream place yeah. and the, the woman other woman presents. running the video thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So overall, what did you both think of it? I think of the movie. What do you think, Ryan? It was exactly what I was hoping it was going to be. And I was, and I, so that means I liked it. And uh-huh. I thought it was funny because my wife watched both this one and the last one we watched. And she's like, oh, this one's way better. I'm like, oh, really? I, like, I like the last one too. Uh-huh. And she's like, no, this is way better. The actors are better. Her only complaint is she wasn't a fan of the kiss at the end. She wanted some more gusto in oh the kiss. Oh my gosh, that is mm-hmm. Sarah's thing. Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, okay, don't worry. Message received. You like yeah. really passionate kisses. <laughs> I think that was a little bit COVID affected. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because they can only yeah, do one they... take. Okay, run, get away from yeah. each other. <laughs> As as somebody who's worked on a lot of COVID sets where like, you know, you've had to do a ton of testing and stuff like there were bits where you could see that this was definitely made during the pandemic Mm -hmm. because um, a lot of the extras in the scenes where whenever she's changing the sign saying how many days until Christmas, all the extras who are walking around are basically six feet apart from each other as they're walking around set. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, yeah, you guys are being here all day. You're definitely giving each other distance. (laughs) Yeah. My only complaint about this movie is that there weren't enough cats compared to the last one we did. I was wishing for more cats. Yeah, more cats. But that's okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If people don't know, the previous time that Ryan and Kelly were on the podcast, we talked about Nine Lives of Christmas. Which is a fan favorite, uh, mm-hmm. which <laughs> people yeah. love that movie, mm-hmm. and I I enjoy it too. Uh, but uh, it there you can see a, definitely a big difference between Hallmark because that was I think 2015. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, it's a totally different leadership, a totally different style, kind of movie making. Uh, mm-hmm. There, it's you can definitely see the the difference going on. Yeah, what do you between think? these films? But what do you uh, think, Kelly. Yeah, um, what do you think, Kelly? Let's see. I actually, um, I really also enjoyed the acting a lot. The acting was, I think, um, my favorite thing about this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love catching the, um, like the kid, his son has, um, 
like a Canadian accent that peeks through every <laughs> once in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <in Canada. laughs> um, but overall, I thought it was it was good. I don't know. I, I, I think I might have liked the Nine Lives of Christmas a little bit more, but it was sweet. I I really liked the acting. And honestly, so we were doing the um, the story synopsis uh, just a couple seconds ago. Mm-hmm. And um, like we know the entire time that he's talking to her both as like the guy who's calling her and texting her yeah. and as the one who keeps coming in. And I'm like, you know what? There's part of me that like wants him, like us, the audience, not to know. But I was like, maybe that wouldn't make it hallmarky. And so at the end, I was like, no, no, I needed that. I yeah. needed like a plain like tried and true love story that wasn't trying to be complicated yeah. at the end of the day. And I, I really loved it for that. Well, that's what we're learning as we're getting introduced to more and more Hallmark movies. Cause it, it feels like a mountain of movies. There's like a bajillion of them. I'll it's, never catch up. It's yeah. like going into Powell's books and being like, I'll read point zero 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 one of these by the time I die. But it's kind of like Louis L'Amour books or some other like staple Super where it's prolific. like you just know Writer. what you want. Like yeah. if you're going to a Hallmark movie, you're never surprised by a Hallmark movie. Like there's not like a random F word in there. It's like that's never going to happen. <laughs> uh, so and and like I said last time on the show, I think is it's very good for us to have quality rom coms that I can have a seven year old in the room and I don't have to worry like yeah. for that one questionable scene. Sure. Uh, and it's just, it's a good time for the whole family. So mm-hmm. I always appreciate totally, that. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I did want some yeah. Christmas cookies a lot. After yeah. Watching this. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it is nice that like, I love original programming. Of course everybody does, but there's also something really nice about just knowing exactly what you're going to get sitting down and getting it. <laughs> yeah. And I I knew I'm like, the last scene is for the kiss. Like, there's not going to be a question. I'm All right, let's yeah. check out the kiss. I'm like waiting for each trope. I'm like, how well are they going to do it mm-hmm. this time? And like yeah. I said, my wife was disappointed. In that <laughs> how did you feel? About well, that? I, I like the it, kiss. It really was unbelievable. Believable what Hallmark pulled off in 2020, though. Mm. I mean, in that year to be able to produce 40 movies in 2020 is just amazing that's crazy (laughs) it is i mean it's it's 1930s 1940s level of like out churn them out yeah Mm -hmm. good job guys i mean we did not think that they were going to be able to pull it off and of course they have all different studios that then they distribute the movies but then they have ones that they make you know themselves they work mar vista and other companies like Mm -hmm. that uh but but the fact that they pulled that off and then Lifetime had, I think, 30 something. Oh, wow. Wow. So the Christmas movie, <laughs> the Christmas movie. You guys got taken care of. Did not get get uh, did not get stalled at all by yeah. COVID. They, yeah. they said, forget you, COVID. Hollywood shut down. They really stopped making movies in California. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but Canada, they figured it out. You know, I, I was I was actually really surprised by how many people were in this movie, just like counting the the mm-hmm. extras, especially yeah. the amount of people they had in the rooms, because there's I mean, there's a couple other hallmarks that I've like just seen scenes from that mm-hmm. were made in 2020 where there's like four people in the movie and like the extras are way in the background and everybody's talking to each other through windows. And it's like, oh, Obviously, this was made on a set in like eight days and you guys just didn't have like like you guys weren't given the budget that you needed to like overcome COVID to make a production. But this one definitely was. This Mm -hmm. one feels like it was like taken care of by the producers Mm -hmm. really well. Yeah. And I I just like the overall element of them having a courtship over the phone, Mm -hmm. which brings me back to like high school and college, especially college when you would go for holiday break and you'd always have some girl that you had a crush on or something. And it's like, oh, I'm give him a call. And that's when Sarah, my wife and I started talking a lot more and it kind of brought me back to that, like budding relationship and starting to grow closer to each other. And I liked that. It was weird that they had really good chemistry by not being on screen together. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think actually it's this is not a knock against it, but I think some of the best chemistry they had was when they were having that deep conversation over the phone. Yeah, yeah. Um, their chemistry was great when they were alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, but that's all ha- of Sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. 
We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. If you love Hallmark Royal Romances, you'll be swept away by To Win a Prince an Africa set royal romance novel. When a fashion designer is forced to work alongside the prince who portrayed her best friend, she must stop herself from falling before she's too far gone. This book has all the best tropes, enemies to lovers, forced proximity, and grumpy sunshine. If you're looking for a romance that will have you enchanted from the first page to the last, to win a prince must be added to the top of your to be read pile. Get 40% off and free shipping at bakerbookhouse.com when you purchase To Win a Prince or In Search of a Prince with the promo code HMSHILOH40. That's bakerbookhouse.com code HMSHILOH40. Little kid, Charlie, uh, Kessler Talbot is his name. He was, a, I thought, a really good child actor. <laughs> very, mm-hmm. very cute, uh, but believable. I thought that yeah. he was he was a pretty good yeah not not too cheesy because sometimes they can get really cheeseball kids yeah Mm -hmm. because the the directors like goad them into being like really cute and adorable but he felt like a normal kid because like Mm -hmm. the one lady who was it was never going to happen with he's like no you should go away i don't like you (laughs) there there was this one moment that he like it was so cutting the dad is about to give their tree away and he's like wouldn't it be the kind thing to do? And he just looks at his dad as if he betrayed him. And he's like, you, I was afraid you were going to say that. And, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, oh, dang, kid. Mm-hmm. Like, slow down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they also weave in the military element in a pretty nuanced way for Hallmark. A lot of times that yeah. can be very heavy handed. And, mm-hmm. and it's rough and sometimes. Chris, you know what I mean? We yeah. love our troops. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. But it can just be a little, a little nationalistic sometimes. Uh, right. Where this was, this was very sweet and believable, and I thought it, it worked quite well. Yeah, I was really surprised by a lot of the that plot elements, and then all the stuff that the kid wanted to do. I, th- mm-hmm. I thought that was the most original stuff that they got to weave in because the plot was what you expected, but the little details were new mm-hmm. to me, and I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, what do you think of her post-it note system? That she has dumb, for organizing. Dumb. <laughs> I love the romance of it, but dumb. Also, she's pr- like, she's telling her sister, I'm so busy this morning. Look at all these things I have to do. I have to do all these cookie things. And then she stops and has like a nice slow conversation <laughs> and like talks and stuff. And it's a, you're not busy. And it's the same thing. Well, we I go mean, over to the next house and the, his sister in law is like, Oh my gosh, I have so much to put together. I can barely handle it. And then she proceeds to have a very awkward conversation <laughs> with, everybody and like talk about yeah. romance and i'm like you're not busy either none of you are actually busy you're just yeah. telling them that so that you can like yeah. leave when you want to <laughs> yeah it's probably unrealistic that she wouldn't have some assistance of some kind she seems to be running some this kind all by herself well it was covid you know they had yeah. to send everyone oh home yeah, to yeah, the yeah ppp loans it was a really that. sad when they had to just cut, <laughs> yeah. cut out all of the elves yeah from, the from elves had to go her. home they had to they had to work from home so they were you know needing their dough <laughs> in right. their home and kitchens sending it in yeah. yeah she also doesn't seem to need sleep because she's up all night baking because she says oh you gotta have croissants in the morning uh, but he was gung ho. He's like, it's three in the morning. I'll give you a call. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? Can I um, can I jump in here with Kelly's baking mistakes? What'd you do? It's a new segment. On What'd you show. do? Yes, no, please. I didn't do anything. She did something. Oh. She says at one point in time, he burns cookies, right? Right. He's, he, uh-huh. cause he is for some reason uh, volunteers to make cookies and he burns them. And then she's like, well, did you freeze the dough? And I, a baker of cookies over here. I'm like, I know why you freeze the dough. It's so that the cookies don't spread out as much and they stay mm-hmm. chewier. And it's it has more to do with like the moisture and the fat solubles in there. It has nothing to do with burning the cookies. Yeah. Cookies burn and and they cook at almost the exact same rate as as normal cookies. The reason why they burned is because he left them in the oven. Get out of here with that, Hallmark. Do your research. <laughs> That's what I have to say. Yeah, I did think of that too. That, <laughs> that didn't have anything to do with them burning <laughs> to crisp. I just think... I just think it's kind of adorable, Kelly, that you think you know more about this woman who owns her own bakery and is doing really well. The so, thing that got me, though, is that he's just like, well, how about you uh, 
uh, make gingerbread houses in houses instead. Have we gingerbread houses? And she's like, Oh, sure, no problem. I'm like, that would take so much work. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you kidding me? Gingerbread houses are impossible. They're so hard. And to to come up with all of the pieces and make them all fit and have like a pattern and everything. And I nobody mean, eats them. They yeah. take them home yeah, and they sit there them. and then they it's start just... rotting like pumpkins outside your door. Yeah, it's, it's construction <laughs> materials. Time and materials take so much. But yeah. I, I, I do feel like everybody in a Hallmark movie is basically pleasant. And so that's when really he, nice to have these days. Yeah, it is nice to have. Um, yeah. But when when she when he was like, hey, can you change plans? I would love her like to hang up the phone and just like hit it against her head and be like, I hate when people do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's something that has changed since Nine Lives of Christmas because we, if I don't know if you remember, but in the Nine Lives of Christmas, he's dating that horrible woman. Oh who, yeah, like, yeah, who doesn't like cats and is just <sighs> mean. And, and you're like, why are you dating this person? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't do that as much anymore. Everybody's that's, usually pretty. That's what nice. we liked about this other girl who was shooting her shot with him, but yeah. it was never going to happen. And my wife was just kind of doing open commentary on these like she usually does. She's like, no, no, we don't need to hate her. Like we like her, but we don't want her to succeed. And they kind of threaded the needle really nice Mm -hmm. where it's like, we don't want it to happen for you, but we admire your like courageousness here. Mm-hmm. I would have liked a little bit of a rivalry. I would have like I <laughs> some conflict in there. Some yeah, drama. Well, like what yeah, did you I mean, ever watching she... this movie your first time? Did you think that she was at any point in time, possibly going to be no. a rival. No, <laughs> of course not. But but she thinks that, of course, that she's uh, that she's insistent. She, I mean, she jumps to all these conclusions throughout the film. Like at the beginning, she thinks that his sister is his wife, and then she thinks that he's dating uh, Fiona Vroom, and uh, and you think that after the first big misunderstanding, she'd like calm down. Yeah, <laughs> but she's very the, upset at the end. She's like. <laughs> Hey, you know, I I don't want complicated. You don't want complicated, and I'm like, you're making this complicated. It's pretty with complicated. Yeah. Your jump to yeah. conclusions, yeah. Yeah. board that you're jumping on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I also think that Eon Bailey, he totally has that like hot quarantine look going with the scruffy, <laughs> with the beard. You yeah. know, yeah, definitely. Yeah. He looks like it's... Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead. Yeah, but like his <laughs> brother that did that happened to be in a nice place during the apocalypse. Well, and Sarah yeah. was like, "Hey, he's pretty handsome." I'm like, he is he's not. He's not Superman. So like, I'm a Superman. (laughs) But I I like him. I like his look. And honestly, whenever he smiles, he really lights up the room. Yeah. I I have either of you. Ryan, you haven't seen Once Upon a Time, right? The the ABC show. show. Yeah, the show. I haven't seen. Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, he has so much charisma in that show. Wait, who is he? Isn't he supposed to be a Disney character then? I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to ruin it because it's a big spoiler oh. for the first season. So, but if, he if, is a main. He's a major character. Yeah, he's a major character. Oh, OK, um, and it's on Disney Plus now. I could check it out. You should. It's it's mm-hmm. it's a fun show. Um, it is a fun show. But in this one, it felt like the director was like walking up to him all the time. He's like, hey, I'm, I love down. the last take. Just Tone can you make it more grim? Can you possibly? make it? Can you be more of a widower? Can you can you just <laughs> think about your wife's been dead yeah. for five years? I know. But can you think about her now? It's Christmas. He's, he's very sad. sad. Very yeah. sad. And that is a, that is a hallmark trope is the the hot widower. The widower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's pretty hot. So I mean, yeah, he's, uh, he's got it. Hot. I mean, and and so does um a, a, a gosh, I I am forgetting her name. Avila? No, that that can't be right. Alvina, I think. It's, Alvina. Yeah, she's Alvina. Also, like this might be the hottest couple on Hallmark. I'm yeah I'm, that I've they seen. They had anyway. such chemistry. We'll talk about it, but that scene in the ice cream shop. Mm. Oh, and, and and the way that he looks at her as she's leaving, it's just like so swoon worthy. Like he's mm. so into her. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, it's so good. <laughs> and this is, again, I, I keep bringing up my wife. I'm really sorry, but she keeps like nudging me. She's like, oh, that's a good moment. I'm like, what? What? What did I miss? And she's like, the look, him being yeah. cute with his son. I'm like, that's yeah. good. She's like, yes. And he's he's the consummate gentleman because he's always like, take mm-hmm. this. Tree, yeah. Have my place in line. Don't even worry about it. And so, you know, he's got that going for him, too. He's mm-hmm. very polite. Well, and I thought that both sisters were really solid and they can mm-hmm. be kind of annoying or not that great in these movies, but especially her sister. That was well done. And it felt like a sister to me. I thought yeah, it, that she was a, a good character. I'm 
going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> you didn't like oh, the you sister? didn't like her? I don't know. I it's all I right. Thought we don't... <laughs> she was I thought she was one note like I'm gonna be encouraging you to, you know, date somebody the entire time. Like uh-huh. when when they go to dinner, she like I don't know. It's it's the the only like her inner life doesn't exist and I hate that about characters yeah, that's sometimes. Fair. Where it's like yeah. I get that she has a daughter and I get that she has a husband, but I don't know how she feels about anything outside of her. Well, sister. okay. Yeah. I don't think she that's really true. likes her daughter because she keeps making her sister take her daughter everywhere. And yeah. it's like Take yeah. some responsibility, lady. And she's always showing up at the maybe she works nights because she's always showing up at the bakery in the middle of the day. Yeah. <laughs> I love um, at the end though when she brings the dress and she's like, You've got to go now. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was good she that pulled, she kind of detectived the whole thing. Yeah. 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 She came in. Can, can um, I can I talk about our meet cute? Really quick. Yeah, yeah. So they they go. He goes to the ugly Christmas sweater party at first, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that was cute. And then, uh, and then they go Christmas tree shopping, and that's mm. where they meet. They yes. touch hands, touch over the Christmas tree. I it's very Jane Austen. One. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's actually not too unlike um, Nine Lives of Christmas, where they meet through the aisle of um, groceries. Do they right. do they look and see each other through it, or just are they next? I to I just each remember other? her freaking out at a grocery store. That's how I remember. Maybe yeah, he picked well, up something she, that was too tall for her. Yeah, she gives him the advice on the. Uh, the cat diarrhea. The cat. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. That's good. That's good for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, they're literally reaching over the Christmas tree and they the hands touch. And uh, so that was like a socially distanced meet cute, I guess. Yeah. For 2020. Yeah. <laughs> I my favorite thing Spray about some it, sanitizer on it right away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um they're because they're feeling for the softness, right? Yeah. And they can't see each other through the tree and they touch each other. So I like the symbolism here of like later on in the movie, they're also not seeing each other, but they're like reaching out and touching each other through their phone conversations and texting. So I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I dig what you're doing here, writer. But at the same time, the line that she says, like after she walks up, she's like, oh, we just walked up here too, or something like that. I can't remember the exact line, but he's mm-hmm. like, it's something like, yeah, of course you did. You weren't hanging out inside this tree the whole time. <laughs> 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 you did just walk up here. <laughs> yeah. But it was a good meet cute. I it was I, I appreciate one, um, mm-hmm. especially at, at, I love the guy coming up and being like, "No, this tree's actually sold. Neither of you can have it." That you, was, that was yeah, good. that was an and, that was a nice twist. And then we get scenes where they're both uh, decorating their trees that they've gotten with their ch- child figure, <laughs> with her niece, yeah, with his, yeah. his son, <laughs> and uh, so that's really cute uh adorable i wrote in my notes <laughs> sarah was like production design definitely came from target i'm like yep these are these are good yeah. low budget movies but they know they know how to shop as someone who's oh. worked in the art department before target is great for returning things so mm-hmm. for all you are young art directors out there <laughs> but if you need to return stuff that's the place yeah these production yeah. companies yeah. know it's what it's about yeah. They know how to dress a set for the holidays. Oh, yeah. There's no question about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, which which tree did you guys like more? Because basically we had a, a short fat one um, with, uh, yeah, with Ian his. Bailey and his, his kid. Um, mm-hmm. And Alvina's tree, it was a little bit more like standard. Like what what about you two? Like well, if you're going mm-hmm. for Christmas tree. I, go I, get, I got distracted by the, the star, the nice red star. Mm-hmm. And I just was thinking, I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I can do that with my toddler right now. Like, lift, I feel like up. he would knock down the tree as soon as I let him, gave him that job. Well, and she does the popcorn and cranberry garlands. And right. those take so long. They always show them in these movies. And I don't think anybody in real life does them. There's, so my wife it does it so every year. Really? Long. Every year. My wife gets together really? with her best friend and they watch Elf and they string cranberries every year. And, and it really, oh. it, it takes the length of a movie and you have yeah. a bunch of cranberries and <laughs> you just take floss and you just keep yeah. shooting a pin Do through the cranberries. cranberries like mold or something? Does it get gross? No, they dry out. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. they dry out. They're I'm not, not going to help. <laughs> there isn't like fruit inside. There's not like pulp inside 
cranberries. It's okay. like hollow on yeah, the inside. So I think they just dry. Just dries out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It looks gross after a while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like it looks like you put a bunch of red raisins on something and then just let them wilt. Well, that's yeah. nice because then it, when, when it's New Year's, it's like, okay, take the tree down. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, that's the secret. Put rotten fruit on it. Yeah. And you'll have to take it down. <laughs> he's so involved with decorating the tree that he forgets about the cookies, burns the cookies. Mm hmm. And then she's talking to the sister and uh, the sister saying, oh, you're blushing because that cute guy from the Christmas tree lot. I mean, this guy really made an impression on mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, how could they he's, not? he's so he's so cute. he's just charming and nice. She actually seems a bit standoffish. Um, yeah, a little bit. Because he's like, hey, we're walking the same way. It's that awkward thing mm-hmm. you yeah. know, that happens to every single couple. And then she's like, well, I'm going to go look over here. And I wonder if that's a competitive streak where she's like, I don't want to fight this guy over a tree. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I like I like the aspect of these are people like late 30s. He's got a kid with him. She's she's got her niece mm-hmm. and it's kind of like an awkward social thing. It's like, uh, how do you know if the person's married, widowed, divorced? Sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of weird. And so she just she got scared off. You, you do this. I, I, yeah. This is my favorite move when I was single. You lean in real close. I'm leaning into Ryan, everybody. You go. You got a wife? Uh, that would not work on me. <laughs> close talker, like in Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. No, don't do that. That's the opposite of what is yeah. good. But her her attitude at the tree shop is informed by her backstory. Mm-hmm. I don't know if mm-hmm. I'm allowed to spoil her backstory. Yeah, in some ways, yeah, she actually is kind of similar to Marilee in Night Lives of Christmas in the sense that Marilee is quick to make a judgment and freak out and be like, oh. And protect you're, you're dating herself. That, that blonde haired woman at the yeah. party and mm-hmm. you know kind of it's sort of similar but here She's she does it twice mm-hmm. hello i'm hannah and i'm katie and we have a podcast called one kiss means forever do you love made for tv rom-coms Are you obsessed with Hallmark and all the Hallmark-inspired copycats that have come out on other platforms like Netflix? And, while being obsessed, do you know that these are not what one might call quality films? (laughs) If so, come listen to our podcast. Each episode, we discuss one movie that did not have a theatrical release and always ends in a happily ever after. And how do we know it will end in a happily ever after? Because one kiss means forever, of course. So join us as we deep dive into each movie for about 45 minutes. Episodes drop every other Thursday, except during the very elongated Hallmark Christmas season when we join the Christmas craze and go weekly for about two and a half months. Bye! Bye. But I think she's... She says she has a busy life, which makes it hard. Like she, that's what she pushes back mm-hmm. against her sister when her sister's like, you know, get out there, date more. And she's like, I've got my business. But really, that's all she has to worry about. So I feel like she has just a little bit of room for dating in there. She does, but it's yeah. a nice excuse. Oh, business. Yeah, business. yeah right. <laughs> uh, so then he, there's a cute conversation where he says, he tells Charlie, I was afraid of losing you too. After he lost his wife in the in uh, Iraq, I guess, or Afghanistan. Um, yeah, I don't know and, when this is set. Yeah. Yeah. And so he sells his company and moves uh, to be closer to his sister and uh, to spend more time with his son. So that was very sweet. And this is when he emails her the first time about the donation mm-hmm. and they start chatting and, and they just have great online chemistry. Yeah. Dream. <laughs> Good online chemistry. Again. I love that. <laughs> taking a big swing of like yeah let's just have a phone call now at four in the morning yeah it's yeah a, okay it's a big swing yeah um but uh isn't it his brother who sees him having this conversation late at night yeah. talking to mm-hmm. himself yeah He's a his brother-in-law i think it's his sister is the no no his a... sister-in-law is the person oh is because that late because they're he's like hey bro yeah they're, they're they talk about like <laughs> do you ever talk to your brother do you say bro have you ever referred we, to him, addressed only, him as bro? No, we usually uh, talk to each other like we're Arrested Development characters. <laughs> mm. like a, hey, brother. Yeah. No, yeah. I think you're supposed hey, to say brother. Sir Bro. Hello, Sir I Bro. I mean, Hello, as bro. a fellow insomniac, I would be pretty excited to, to have this kind of interaction. Yes, I love night. the like late yeah. night. Oh, you were obviously thinking of me if you called mm-hmm. me now. Like, there's no other reason. That's got to feel nice. It's nice. It's a compliment. <laughs> so they go in the ice cream store. 
the next day mm-hmm. and he's making all the dad jokes. He's just so cute. And again, and Charlie special. is Charlie is like against the dad jokes. He's like, dad, I do not like these. <laughs> just good. like, I don't like you being kind. I don't like you making jokes. <laughs> yeah. I want you to be dour. Be <laughs> dour, dad. It's good and fresh. <laughs> but here are the special Christmas flavors. I'm curious for which you would pick. We have mm. gingerbread cookie, rum raisin, candy cane, chocolate, reindeer tracks, and sugar cookie. Wait, is that chocolate reindeer tracks? Because chocolate is not just a Christmas flavor, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Chocolate reindeer tracks. Okay. Yeah. And what was the last sure. one? Sugar cookie. Have you ever had rum raisin? No, but I uh, there's that great scene in City Slickers where um, they're trying to guess what pairs best with something, and they both come up with rum raisin <laughs> at the same time. And so that's all I've ever known about. Is it good? I, I don't drink, it? so I I wouldn't pick it just because I'm not accustomed well, I to wonder, the flavor. I sure. remember I've been to Utah a lot of times, and you, you know <laughs> what's that called the the Iron Curtain, the liquor curtain, or something? Oh yeah, it's yeah. Called. <laughs> I wonder if there's an ice cream shop version of that of like, whoa, 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 whoa like slow down the rum raisin there. <laughs> Even though it's baked out. Yeah. <laughs> like I think it's, yeah, I think it's baked out. I just, I'm not really used to the flavors. I think it's yeah. an acquired taste. The flavor of rum by itself is no good. No. It tastes like, like rotten sugar. I don't want to have rum raisin. No. No. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I think mm-hmm. I'm going, can I cheat and say I, I want double scoops? Yeah. Yeah. Go for I it. I think you can cheat. Okay. I, I think I'm going with sugar cookie. And, and gingerbread Ooh. is double cookies, double baked goods. But I'm here for that. Uh, is there a dairy free version? Because I have to go dairy free. You can get any of them dairy free. Oh, okay. Probably. I'll do dairy yeah, free sugar free. cookie. Sugar cookie? High five. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Rachel? <laughs> um, I think I would go with candy cane. I think. It's oh, yeah. Whoa, yeah. bold yeah. choice. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, nice strong flavor. See, yeah, he he wins like some sort of carnival game later on at the Christmas fest, and he receives for his daring deed a uh, candy cane. And I'm like, come on, small. Yeah, town. he needed more. Like, like they give him a rinky dink candy cane. I'm like, give him the bag of candy. Like canes. the guy's he got a, a rich dad job. that can buy him candy cane come ice on. cream anytime. Like I I just wanted him to like throw it on the ground and say thanks. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> that is not a good prize for a Christmas festival. Like they they give those out at the bank. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're the equivalent of yeah. lollipops, but like old lollipops yeah. that have been it in was, somebody's pocket. It was pretty weak. Pretty weak. <laughs> But I, uh, but I just love that scene when uh, she walks out of the ice cream store and you just see him just like looking mm. at mm-hmm. her, totally like, oh, into her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's so swoon worthy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, really I didn't good. like how his eyes just drifted straight down to her butt and stayed there. And they and the <laughs> oh, and the scene it. just like went on for fifty seconds after that, where he's just <laughs> thinking about her. Yeah, and and it's like, come on, guys, you got to cut at some point. <laughs> <laughs> It was very swoon worthy, I think. And <laughs> yeah, then she I says agree. later, was, says, yeah. he's a nice man and a great dad. I mean, yeah, that is yeah. the. Uh, I mean, what more can you want? Yeah, double. Mm-hmm. <laughs> double. Right. Check, check. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and he says, she says, you're a jack of all trades except baking cookies. <laughs> because that's that's when she says, oh, you didn't chill the dough. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but you're absolutely right about that. You guys want to know a fun fact about jack of all trades? Tell us. Tell us. The, the original quote. And I, I might be a little bit off with it, but it basically goes, um, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but they're still better than a master of one. Mm-hmm. That sounds like the intro to a Broadway song. No, oh, well, <laughs> like maybe that's could be in Mystic Pizza. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but I, I just burned I, the pizza dough, Julia Roberts. I feel like a jack of all trades is mwah, if you can pull it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're planning this uh, way to honor. His wife's uh, wife, Christie's memory, mm-hmm. uh, because number nine on their list is an act of Christmas kindness. Oh, yeah. The Christmas list. Horrible. We forgot about the Christmas list. You totally list. would have a list. Yeah. You're going to have a list. I like a Christmas list. Like yeah, We have to do have all these list. things this season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Mm-hmm. And so they are wrapping uh, presents. And uh, and she uh, sh- and he sees Molly wrapping and, and running the uh, the booth. And uh, and he says it makes people happy just being around Molly. Mm-hmm. And he says I'll come back with my dad. Maybe he'll want to make a video. Oh yeah, because so he she's gets making a video to send to the troops, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was that was a nice touch. So they're talking about Christmas songs at one point, 
And the little boy says his favorite song is the 12 Days of Christmas. Nobody's favorite yeah. song is the no, 12 Days I of think, Christmas. I feel like 9 through 12-year-old boys would be the only <laughs> group of people that might answer that way. That is the, he's, being, uh, he's punking us. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just like, you know, it's the most annoying one. So, of course, he'd pick it. <laughs> <laughs> What's your guys' least favorite Christmas song? The 12 Days of Christmas. Oh, is it? <laughs> It's the 12 days of Christmas or Little Drummer Boy. Those are my least yes. favorite. <laughs> those are those are both very bad. I also highly recommend you go listen to Christmas in the Northwest, which is a wretched song. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, no. If you haven't heard it, go go listen. It doesn't to get it. a lot of radio play outside of the Northwest. No. But if you're in the Northwest, it, you're afflicted by it. Yeah, it's it's rough, but mm-hmm. perfect for being rough. Well, then there's a really sweet scene where he says to Charlie, because uh, Charlie says he can't remember his mom. Mm. He says, if you want to see her, just look in the mirror. Yeah, mm. that's really nice. <laughs> Later, so Robin, sweet. Robin had to leave at one point in time to go to work, but then she came back when I was finishing the movie. Uh-huh. And she was just like, the son doesn't really look like the dad. I'm like, actually, they took care of that earlier in the movie. <laughs> he looks like the mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, good. and you know this movie is working when Sarah had to go to the bathroom and she told me to pause. And it's like, mm. oh, okay, so you're invested. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we do get some of... Uh, her backstory of why she's so skittish and everything because her mm-hmm. fiance left her at the altar, That's which rough. I have never heard of that actually ever happening in real life. It's a classic. It's in movies trope. all the time. It's a classic. It, yeah. It's in movies all the time. I know one person who somebody did the I object to. I'm not no going to call them out on this podcast and it interrupted the wedding they ended up going through with the wedding, but it definitely put the wedding on pause for like what? 10 minutes while they took care of this nonsense. <laughs> Whoa. That, but no one actually asks for the objection. No, it was like a, a wedding interruption, like a wait. Oh, really? Was it at someone the stormed in and was like, wait, stop I think they the were wedding. A guest. But like, in, was it in the middle? Was it oh towards the gosh. end? Was it at the very beginning? Was I like dearly beloved? And he's during. like, stop. Stop! Hold on. <laughs> They're like walking down the aisle, and he's like, "Hold on a second! No, no, wait, no, wait, wait, no, wait! No. I don't want to put everybody through this if you're gonna if you're gonna do the whole thing." I, I, but she talked about how she was baking the cake for her own yeah, wedding. Yeah, that's nice. That was, yeah, I that like was, that. That was, I could believe that. Yeah, that and then, yeah. yeah, and then she gets left at the altar. So that, I think that's why she's so insecure. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least that's the answer that we're given. And then they have this really great conversation about. Uh, the, he says, she says, I, that you're a good listener. He says, I know what it feels to, I know how it feels to need to talk to people. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they, he talks about his kid and Charlie's my everything. And then she says, when I talk to him, it's easy. We tell each other things. We don't tell other people. And if, and if there's chemistry, it's worth it. Um, so, that felt very Sleepless in Seattle, that whole part of it to yeah. me. Like when in Sleepless in Seattle, when he's talking about, I breathe in and breathe out. And then the next day I would breathe in and breathe out, mm-hmm. which is so good. <laughs> I really did like that scene a lot. It's it's hard for me when like uh, she tells, she's telling her sister this stuff, like that it's mm-hmm. really easy talking to him and like opening up to him. Um, if I was her sister, I would also be like, okay, you've had a conversation with him on the phone that is intimate, like make sure like that you go on a date with him before you like, you know, get super highly invested in this person um, that you've had. a. I uh, no, I object okay. because you had one conversation with Robin and you came to my house and you're like, I met the most amazing girl. So by the time I, the, by the time I told you that I'd had two conversations oh, with oh, her. Oh, Hold two on. conversations. Well, let me finish. <laughs> we met in person. And we talked for like six hours the okay. second day. So I'm just going to yeah. say meeting somebody in person is important because sure. it is easy to talk to somebody over the phone. Sure, but still. And so I was, glad, next... I was glad when she found out in, in this next scene who he was. Yeah, because that's the next scene is that she realizes that Josh is the treat guy. The whole meetup is very You've Got Mail-y, very shopper mm-hmm. on the cornery. And uh, and she thinks that uh, that he is dating the his sister which is a sister-in-law sister-in-law. but then she finds out that it was a sister-in-law and she uh, makes some quick assumptions she does she does (laughs) like he's married to her obviously and i was like well (laughs) look they're standing next to each other and you've got to feel a little 
you've got to feel a little bad for Fiona Vrome's character because Charlie comes in and she he sees that it's her there. She's mm-hmm. like volunteering her time and he's like, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like, Oh great. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> not not Molly at Holiday Heroes. Yeah. And uh so he he's he, they set up this date for him uh with Fiona and uh, he wants to cancel, uh, but um, uh, he ends up going to dinner. He, he ends up going for the worst reason, where he says, oh, she didn't make reservations. And then she texted that he she did make reservations. Mm-hmm. And as somebody in the service industry, I'm telling you people, all you, have can, all you have to do is call and say, oh, can I cancel those reservations? It's not <laughs> like she's yeah. set in stone. It, she doesn't have to go to the restaurant no, later that I'm day. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to differ because like, I was, I had been meeting to cancel a dentist appointment last week and I kept calling and I couldn't get through to them. And it just got to the point where it was the day. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm just going to go to the dentist. Do you think dentist. the small town restaurant is mm-hmm. not going to be able to like take No, I just get the personality type of like, <laughs> I don't know. It's so awkward to do this sometimes. Just I just want to quit the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's one thing if you're going to like Disneyland or something. I know you have to cancel your reservations, your your uh, your sit down reservations, twenty four hours uh, ahead of time. Oh, like at the the restaurant that's uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, downstairs. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, but, you guys been to the Pirates of the Caribbean? No, I wanted to my whole life. Shut up! So I'm good. so jealous <laughs> that you actually you go. You don't even care. It's I've so been there good. so many times. I know. I tried to get there reservations so there. Yeah, because I'm going for D23. Oh, I failed. They I lucked failed. in. They, they all, all you guys had to do was stumble upon somebody who was like working there. <laughs> well, it, it, the, that one, it, they had closed it for renovations. Like they closed down a the long whole time. Thing. It just opened. Yeah. And so they opened the restaurant first and the, the ride wasn't open yet, but they did open the restaurant. And so it was a soft open, soft reopen of the restaurant. And basically the cast members were like, well, just, you know, come, come ask and maybe we'll let you in. And we, mm-hmm. we asked and like, okay, you're in. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. So cool. Uh, Well, so she is delivering bread to the restaurant owner. And she sees them on this date. And she freaks out. She's like, they're getting (laughs) married. Yeah. (laughs) Obviously, I saw a ring. I saw a ring in the wine. He's proposing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so she tells the sister, you got to deliver all the cookies. I'm not going to go. And so then Charlie gets super disappointed again when he sees this, the sister. Yeah. And so is you can see that uh, Josh is also disappointed. It's like, yeah. oh, it's you. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, and Charlie says, you seemed really happy when you were talking with her. <laughs> mm, yeah. So cute. And so yeah. then the sister finds out that she's not dating Fiona. And, uh, and then, so she goes and brings her. She get brings the dress, and then you see her waiting for him in the red dress and like this great social- dress, good dress. Yeah, 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 they're socially distanced but super cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the 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 eleven feet they're standing apart from each other when they're first conversing. I'm like, <laughs> okay, are you sure you guys want to be together? <laughs> yeah. Well, like, he kept saying things. I'm like, shut up and go kiss her. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, this was probably filmed in like july or august of 2020 so the it makes more well, that sense was actually when, when numbers started context. dipping for the first time as well yeah so mm-hmm. they could 
they yeah. could they could have the kiss. Yeah, and I mean, cold they, cut, and they were they were finally doing like a lot of testing at that point in time. Yeah, they were probably fine. Yeah, yeah. But what was so what was their whole thing? What does she say to him? She says, "It's me, Merry Christmas." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm surprised that she wasn't wearing a bow. <laughs> Uh, and she he says, from the moment I met you, I knew there was something about you. I couldn't, mm-hmm. and then I couldn't wait to meet you. And then it says, this doesn't seem too complicated. It's the simplest thing in the world. And that's when they kiss. It was mm-hmm. so cute. Oh, did you Great. like the kiss? I did. I did. Uh, because I don't know. Again, it, it, you have to go to back to that time of 2020. And it, we, the whole movie had worked so well. And I thought they had such chemistry and, and uh, so if it was now, I would probably, I might be a little bit more like, well, that was a weird kiss, but <laughs> you know, you took everything in context. That, yeah. That you don't year. want them slobbering all over each other. No. <laughs> well, speak for yourself. <laughs> but um, I, 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 I think sweet. the, I, I liked the kiss. I thought it was sweet as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think the, the lines preceding it kind of felt like marriage vows a little bit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where, um, you know, in that way that people say, you know, I've, I've thought about this about you from the first moment I, I met you. And so it, it, and then they came together afterwards. So it, it did feel a little marriage mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. a weird way. They were under an well, arbor as well. Yeah. Our friends have a podcast called one kiss means forever where they talk about Hallmark movies and mm. this kind of their ideas that one kiss is all it takes. Mm, you're you're mm-hmm. basically married when you kiss in Hallmark movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of how it works in Jane Austen stories too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's like true. you're in. I mean, yeah, unless, <laughs> you're locked in unless you're like Willoughby or like an evil <laughs> character. Oh yeah, don't even get then, yeah. then you can get Wake somebody up. pregnant. Willoughby. You don't yeah. even have to marry. Him. Yeah, yeah, he just did it through kissing. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch the new Persuasion? Okay. Ryan, don't get us started. So I, bad. I, I've tasked Kelly with reading Persuasion because he hadn't read it yet. And I read it a few <laughs> years ago and I love the book and I saw the trailer. I'm like, yeah. what is this? And so I'm rereading the book. Kelly's I'm, reading, I'm reading it for, it for the, the first, first time. time. It's one of my three Austin blind spots. Yeah. And so we're probably yeah. going to watch it next month. And I'm probably going to be as justified as I think I am in being totally. <laughs> well, if you need anybody to join you, because I, oh, okay. I, hey, I consider I like myself somewhat idea. of an Austin expert. And OK, uh, good. Yeah. Is so. that one you've read multiple times? Mm-hmm. And uh, we, I just, I read it to get ready for the movie and I was pulling for it, but boy, mm. it disappointed so, me. Did you see the nineties version with Kieran Hines? Mm-hmm. Okay. And we did an episode of the podcast where we ranked four different versions of persuasion, me and my friend. Uh, so yeah, I've seen every version. That, Is it's that a the hard best one? Story. Yeah. It's a hard story to tell. I actually like the 2007 version the best, but okay. no, there, we haven't had like the iconic persuasion version yet, mm, I, in I, my I, opinion. Can I can I ask which version, uh, because I already know what the best version of Sense and Sensibility is, but um, <laughs> it, are you a, a five hour Pride and Prejudice or a two and a half hour Pride and Prejudice? I love them both. Me too. Uh, okay. I do. I But I think I'd have to go with the five hour Colin first. Okay. I, I'm going to lean a little bit just to balance out the world. I'm going to lean a little to the 2005 one, mm-hmm. but you know, they're both, they're both beautiful. I love, but I, I mean, I, like I said, I'm usually pretty open to, to, I mean, I'm clueless is one of my favorite movies. I yeah. love oh, yeah. Bride and Prejudice, that, the, yeah. the Bollywood one. I love mm-hmm. uh, oh, Bride and Prejudice. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I even like the zombie movie, Pride and Prejudice <laughs> Zombies. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I've wanted to though. I think it's yeah. fun. Yeah. So anyway, um, but they end the movie with the the military videos, mm-hmm. uh, which I thought was very sweet. And uh, it's just overall just a lovely little movie. I thought they had mm-hmm. such good chemistry. It really hit the spot when it came out. It was the perfect movie for the time. And uh, the kid's cute. I think the supporting players are good. Uh, so yeah, this one, I really, I really enjoyed. It was fun to revisit it. So thank you for yeah. coming on the podcast and talking oh, about thank it. Thank you for having yeah, us. Yeah. We had a good time. Yeah, I'm, I'm really yeah. glad that we watched this, especially when the weather's so hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's especially fun watching a Hallmark Christmas movie off season. Do you ever bake when you watch the movies? <laughs> um, I, I sometimes do. Yeah, I'm not just, the best re- baker in the world. <laughs> well, that's that is a okay. It's like sometimes all you do is like cut up some Pillsbury and throw it in the yeah. oven. But it's just like all I wanted to do was do that, but I couldn't use my oven today because we don't have like mm-hmm. central AC or anything. Oh yeah, and it's muggy so hot. wouldn't that be nice though if you were smelling cookies while this movie? Well, was on? Sarah made gluten free brownies last night. Oh, what? No. oh, oh jelly! So, 
it was it was kind of like perfect timing because mm. she never bakes and it was like of all the days to bake she did it that day maybe yeah. she knew what we were gonna watch she's like you know what baking sounds nice <laughs> I, I figure that it's a hallmark movie somebody will bake in there. there's gonna be yeah. some baking <laughs> so uh, what do you all have coming up any any uh movies you can plug that you're talking about oh we just recorded our episode on greece oh, because fun. we had to perfect. honor sandy sandra d Wait, mm-hmm. were you asking what movies we're working on or what movies we're, we watch For the podcast. For the what podcast. we have coming okay. up. Get out yeah. of your head. We're well, like, I was just, I was just <laughs> asking. Talk about whatever you was, want to plug. I wanted to make sure I was answering the, uh, the question correctly. Please, we just <laughs> whatever agree. you want to plug, you yeah. can plug. <laughs> um, I was really excited about our Mystic Pizza episode. Um, let's see. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, Man, 16 Candles. That was a long one. That was like a two hour we episode. Had a lot we had a to lot unpack. to say. And we had so, a lot to yeah. do. if you want to hear a couple of guys just really deal with it, <laughs> like, yeah, dealing with it, that's us. And next yeah. week, we're going to record our episode on Franco Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, that's going nice. to be a big one. So, be good. It's, it's been a while since uh, I did um, a, a Romeo and Juliet watch. It's been. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> but we did do Clueless like like three or four weeks ago. And yeah. so I love that you brought that uh, up because it was like uh, it was good to revisit it. What do you what do so, you guys have going on? What's coming up for you? Well, I'm not 100 percent sure when I'm going to post this, but uh, we have a um, we have Christmas classics episode coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have uh, we do this series called On Friendship with uh, Dr. Elisa Lucas, who is a friendship scholar. That's her, oh, cool. her area oh, of research. Fun. And so we talk about, so we have one coming up for that. Uh, we, uh, we're going to do our August recap. Uh, that will be fun. Hallmark has been producing just, again, so much content, uh, even off season. Uh, in August, they produced 11 movies Ugh. for their two oh, channels. <laughs> have you ever called them and they just asked them to slow down for you? Just a little. <laughs> I can barely watch four movies in a month. That's all uh, we can really fit in. It's uh, and then like our bonus episode, we've even been like lax on that a little bit. Yeah, we need to go, we're doing speed this month. We really need to oh, get to fun. that. That's good. <laughs> but yeah, I I just applaud the amount of work that you guys do over there, just because it's I don't know, it's amazing. It's a lot that you get through it all. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And uh, if people, your main uh, social media is on Instagram, correct? Yeah, mm-hmm. check us out. Just rom-com at rom com gents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rom-com and it's a really, I just really, I really enjoy your podcast. I think it's nice to have something that you two really respect rom-coms. Mm-hmm. You're not doing Aww. it as a goof. No, and I really don't. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. We love being sincere and yeah. I love like, that's my favorite thing about coming on this one. And like the episodes of yours that I've listened to too, it's all about the love. Like yeah. it's so good to hear just people love on something. Yeah. 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 Well, let us know what you think of Delivered by Christmas if you're listening. And uh, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, the Hallmarkies Pod, and Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes to both of our podcasts, give us our five five star reviews. We would so appreciate it. We'd and so if great. you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store. So take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much. And we'll talk to y'all later. Merry Christmas. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas.